Welcome to another video. On this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an API and pass credentials uh, before you display your records back to the client. So what you need to do first is go file a new project. I'm using Framework 4 and MVC4 web application. Once you click OK, um, the first thing you need to do is, at least on this demo, what I have on my express installation here. I have for this uh, tutorial, I have two, well, I have three, more than one, more than three tables, but I'm going to be using cars brands and cars model and chat user. So the chat user is for a different demo, but I can still use it. This one just holds. Uh, the authentic the user authentication obviously this is not a real uh, way of storing passwords but this is just to keep it simple so you have a username and a password on this table that's it now on the on this other table car brands I have a table with just brands so very simple and I have a Another table called card models. And on this table I have the models uh, and the year. Just to keep it simple. And we have a brand ID. So basically I cannot enter. Um, I'm entering models only for those brands that I have in the cars model. So as you can see, there's an FK for foreign key uh, to keep on to enter only or to insert models that have brands according to the row ID on this side. Okay, so once you have that done, that is not required for this demo. If you have a foreign key or not, just any table will work. Even if you have just one, but you see how. I'm using it on this tutorial so that's to cover the tables brands and the row ID is just the increment and it's the primary key on this table and the models is the row ID is the primary key and the foreign key is brand ID model and year and the brand ID is not required but on this demo I will use it so move on to Visual Studio. So what I did is I did add a new item data, the entity model, name it, save OK. In my case, this is what I got. So you see I have the two tables that I was talking about. And we have one brand, one too many, and we have many models for that brand. That's all it means. And I have another table for for the users user and password that's it so after you have the entity framework ready what you need to do is what I did I did right click add controller I did you named your controller and I did an empty API controller once you hit add you get this one in my case my controller name is the name is car that's the name of it. So, well, before I show you this, let me close this one. When you, uh, when you did the, let me show you. Go back to this project. You see framework. At this stage, make sure you select Web API. If you select this guy or any other template, it can still work, but it will take a little more time. So just click Web API. Make sure you select that template. I'm gonna cancel that. Go open this guy. Somewhere where did it go? Okay, found it. So back to this. Once you have that template selected, this is the win the page that is gonna open to. And basically, it's just a startup. Um, API for you and you can test it really simple 
So I'm gonna run this guy to get started. So here are the uh, five steps at least that I think you need. Make sure you have .NET 4, Express is okay in SQL, and you're using the template called Web API in the Visual Studio uh, selection. And make sure you have a user table, or you can skip it, just hard code it, and the entity framework with the tables you need. But talking about this API, which is called API slash values, if we go to the browser and do slash API slash values, this API is already working. So it returns just the strings. As you can see here, just the value one and value two. Really simple. So that should cover what this file is for. And obviously, if you hit, like it says here, value slash file, it will return value. And here's for posting, putting, deleting. But on this tutorial, we're just going to go do that get. So I'm going to cancel this. Oops. Click on the wrong one. Stop the debugger and close this one and go back to the cars API that I just made. So since we're only covering the get for this API, as you can see, is the same, uh, not the same, but similar to the sample we have, which is enumerable. It's a string. In my case, it's not a string. I'm returning a custom class, which is right here, just a class that has model, year, and brand. So we're going to go back here, and in this case, it's just returning this string, an array of strings. In my case, um, I'm going to return uh, an innumerable of car info, which is this one. So how do you pass the, R the username and password? Obviously, you need to be using HTTPS. But on this tutorial, I don't have that option for the secure connection. So I'm just using HTTP. So what you need to do is pass, I'm going to show you this one. Basically here, you're saying uh, your API slash car, which is not the controller you're using. And in this case, I'm passing here user equals and password equals that. Now, if you run this, uh, the, the request goes in here into this get, and here we get this utility that will parse the string or the URI and find out what keys we have in there. So, in this case, user is the key and password is the key. So here I'm grabbing that, the user and the password. And here I have a function or method uh, which will check the user with password if it's valid. As you can see, it returns a boolean and it's right here. So all it does is text the user and password, see if any uh, combination of user and password is found. And if it is, it's return either false or true. So in this case, if it's true, then it goes and calls this other method call car inventory. So that's the idea. If you have a password, a valid password and username, you can see the inventory for this car or this dealership or whatever. So as you can see here, if it's valid, the user and password, then I'm going to the database. And I'm going to return an innumerable car info. And here I'm using a using statement. And from here, since I have two tables, I'm joining the car models and car brands in the brand ID for the car model and the row ID on the car brand. And then after that, I'm creating this new type, 
of car info and now I'm assigning the value for model, year and brand and then I'm returning or assigning it to this inventory value or object that I have here and I'm returning it back which will go back here and the API will return what you see here you see an array of car info and you see car brand model and year now if I pass the wrong let's say I add this password as you can see it, this was false so we return an empty object car info blank nothing on it and if we can check also the user is not h something still did not match obviously this is not secure because i don't have a secure connection but if you're using https this will be encrypted but if we're using the right password then you can see the data now show you this copy this guy into here this browser say no okay so okay so this browser is different than Firefox it's, it has this pop-up so I'll hit open I guess the Internet Explorer open not sure where to go anyways nobody's using IE hopefully they're not using it it's stuck somewhere it's frozen so we'll try Chrome okay and no wonder nobody uses IE anymore so as you can see in Chrome it is using XML too but in in IE it's returning uh, I tried it a few minutes ago and it's returning a JSON. So between browsers, they're trying, uh, they re return data differently. But I'm sure you can set uh, what kind of format or what kind of data type you want to return to the client. So everywhere you go, it will be XML or just JSON. So hopefully this has answered your questions regarding how you can set uh, your API and to grab username and password and validate it against your database and then return your data back to that client. So if you have any questions, uh, you can go to YouTube and leave me a message. Thank you for watching.